Alright, the time has finally come to make it so that the items in our inventory can actually do something. To do this, we're going to be using scriptable objects, which are a highly flexible and easy way to create items in Unity. For example, you'll be able to head down to your folder, go to Create, Item Scriptable Object. Let's make a burger. And simply in your inspector, you can name the object and choose what stats you'd like it to modify. For example, perhaps this burger is going to restore four health and maybe I want it to give me a strength boost as well. With that done, I can then click on my inventory canvas and head over to my inventory manager where I can just drag that burger into my item scriptable object, object slot and add it so that we create a sort of dictionary of items that exist in the game and now our manager will know what to do when you click on that item. So that's where we're headed today. Let's get started. All right, so getting started, we're going to need to create scriptable objects for the different items in our game. I've got coffee and a burger in, so I'm going to start there. So let's start by heading down into our assets folder and let's just right click to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one item SO for scriptable object. Scriptable objects are data containers. They don't exist as mono behaviors. Instead, their data persists between playthroughs. So we'll need to get rid of this mono behavior and replace it with scriptable object. Also, because a scriptable object doesn't exist as a specific object in your game, it won't use the start and update methods. Instead, you will create your own methods, which will be called from other scripts. One thing we're also going to want to add here is above our class, we're just going to add create asset menu. This literally just makes it so that we will, when we click create, have a menu that will allow us to make this scriptable object. Now our first variable will just be a public string called item name. And this is just how our inventory manager is going to be able to know which item it's actually using. At this point, we're gonna get a little fancy. I'll head down to the bottom of our script where we're going to create an enumeration. This one will be a public enum and we're gonna call it stat to change. This enum will create a drop down menu in Unity of the stats that you'd like to change. So I'm going to put none in case you don't want it to affect a stat, as well as health, mana, and stamina. Though you can pick whatever you like for your game. Now, Unlike a normal method, we do need to add a semicolon at the end of this one to make it work. Now that we've created this enum, we need to actually make a way for the player to access it in the inspector. And so we're going to come back up to the top here where we declare our variables. And we're going to make a public stat to change. And I'm just going to call this one stat to change. Now we're going to set this equal to a new stat to change. And that might seem a little bit weird with syntax, but I'll show you what that looks like in Unity. Now first off, I'm just going to quickly create a new folder for these scriptable objects, and we'll call it items. Now inside of here, because we use that create asset menu, we now have the option under create to create item scriptable objects. Let's call this one coffee. And at the moment, I already have room for a name. And here is my enumerator. Because I declared that, I can now, in the inspector, choose which stat I want to change. Next up, we want to be able to let this item know how much to change it by. So we're going to make a public integer. And we'll call this one amount to change stat. Now, obviously, you can customize this however you like. We could make a, another enumerator here. And perhaps this time, instead of stats to change, we want to make attributes. And this time I might have a whole range of different choices like strength, defense, intelligence, and agility. I could make a, another line up here which will allow the player to access this in the inspector and just change it to attribute. And this time we do amount to change attribute. As you can probably imagine, the possibilities for customization are really, truly endless at this point. So now all that's left to do in our item scriptable object is to make it so that it actually applies these changes to our player. And this will look a little different depending on how you've set up your health or attribute systems, but there are some things that you'll need to do regardless. So first of all, we're going to create a public void method, which is just going to be called useItem. Now this is going to be called no matter what item it is that you are using. So if it's a coffee, use item will be called. And what we're going to do here is perform a check. So we're just going to check to see if the stat to change that's been selected is equal to. And then we just select a stat to change from our enum below. So for example, if the player has selected that the scriptable object stat to change will be health, then on the line below, we'll actually tell it how to change that health. 
Obviously, this will be different depending on how health is set up in your game, but as an example, in my game, I would type game object find, and I would look for my health manager. At this point, I would get the component I created called player health, and I'm going to use the change health method in order to change the health. And in the brackets here, I'll put amount to change stat so that it applies the change I selected in my scriptable object. Now in use item, obviously you would need to create a line like this for each of your possible options. So you would also want to have a line if the stat to change is equal to changing mana. You would then want to make sure that you find your, if you have a mana manager, that you find that, that you find the script that controls it, and then call the method that's actually going to change that. Now again, mine doesn't like that because I don't have a player mana script, but I think you get the idea. Now that we can create these wonderfully adaptable, scriptable objects, we need a way to actually have our inventory manager read them. So I'm just going to head back to my scripts folder and go into the inventory manager. Now at this point, it's actually quite easy to add them on. I'm simply going to create a public item SO, and I'm going to make this an array. That way we can add as many as we like called item SOs. This will allow us to make a list of all of these scriptable objects that we have. And I'm going to head down below here, just above our add item method, and I'm going to create a new one called public void use item. Now this will be called when we click on the item in our item slot, and essentially what we want to do here is we're going to have this expecting a string called item name, and what it's going to do with that name is search through our array of scriptable objects to find the one that matches. So I'm going to type four, double tap tab, and here we are looking through our item SOs and dot length so that it checks the entire array. Now as it checks through this array, we're simply going to check to see if the item SO that it's looking at each time, so we'll put I here, we're going to check to see if the item name of the scriptable object is equal to the item name that's going to be passed over from our item slots. When we click on the slot, it'll say, hey, just clicked coffee. The script will then check slot one to see if there's an item SO called coffee there, and if not, move on to the next one. Now when it does finally find the scriptable object that matches the name, we're going to call that item SO that we're looking at, and we're just going to tell it that we want it to use its item. All right, so with that done, when we click on our canvas now, and head to our inventory menu, we'll notice that there's now a spot for our item SOs. And so we can simply find those items. And as we create them, drag them onto our list. Now the only thing left to do at this point is to make it so that the inventory slots are actually calling this when we click on them. So to do that, we're going to head into our item slot script. All right, now there's actually very little that we need to do here, but I'm going to head down to my on left click. At the moment when we left click an item, it selects the item. So what we just want to do is make it so that if we've already selected the item, if we click it again, it will apply the item. So I'm just going to come to the top of this method here, and I'm just going to go if this item selected, then we want to call our inventory manager dot use item, and we want to pass along the item name. That's it. Now when we left click this the first time, it will select the slot. However, if we click it again, it will recognize it's already selected and it will tell the inventory manager to use the item, passing along what item it will be using. All right, so by way of a little test here, we'll collect that coffee. You'll notice that my health is currently set to one out of 20. The first time I click the coffee, it just selects it. And if I click it again, my health increases by three and each time afterwards as well. Now you'll notice my items aren't yet counting down and we don't have a way for the slot to go empty once we run out of items. We'll get to that in the very next tutorial. That said, I am now nearing the end of this basic inventory series. If there are features you'd still like to see added, please be sure to chime in in the comments so that I know there is interest in other features. Otherwise, we are getting close to the end here. All right, until our next video, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.